And we are live. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the special opinion piece from Off the Post. Uh, yeah, we haven't done one of these in a while, and I hope the volume is working this time or we're going to be in a lot of trouble here. Uh, just wanted to chat about a few things. Uh, this past week, we've had the um, end of season awards for the NWSL being revealed to the public, as well as the roster the U.S. Women's National Team roster being released for the upcoming Switzerland friendly. So just wanted to give a few thoughts on that. Uh, let's go first the awards. Uh, for the Golden Boot, which is a statistical award, no voting on that, went to Lynn Williams from Western New York. Go, Lynn. Um, she t actually tied with uh, Cleo High from Houston with 11 goals, but she was – uh, given the award because she had five assists uh, over uh, Ohio's four. So had to break the ties. First time in league history, we've had two players tie for the league, for the uh, top score in the league. So had to go to the tiebreaker, which is assists. So well done, Lynn Williams. Um, we have the rookie of the year. This year it went to Raquel Rodriguez, the final, final from Sky Blue, the finalists were her. Rachel Daly from Houston and Emily Sonnet from Portland. Uh, yeah, not really a great year for rookies, actually. Bit of a step down, I think, from last season. Um, and, it, and, it, and as many people said, it was kind of a bit of a weak draft class. So I'm not sure she had what could be considered actually a true really super standout season. I think she started kind of slow. But, you know, Emily Sonnet did miss some games for being an alternate for the Olympics. And Rachel Daly was kind of hot and cold. She had some good moments. She had some – was went kind of quiet when they had that – Houston had that six-game scoreless run. So, of those three, I guess you could say that Rocky was the most deserving. But, yeah, overall, not the greatest uh, showings for rookies this season. Next year is supposed to be really loaded draft class, so hopefully we get to see a bit more from the rookies next season. We'll see. Um, we have Coach of the Year. Finalists were Mark Parsons from Portland, uh, Jim Gabar from, Wa from Washington, and Paul Riley from Western New York. The award went to Mark Parsons. Uh, saw some people saying that maybe he shouldn't have won because – Portland had such a stacked roster that maybe it should have gone to Jim Gabara or even Paul Riley. Um, as much as I would have liked to see Paul Riley win, again, I am a Flash fan and I like to see my team win as much as possible. But, you know, Parsons did what he had, what he was set out to do. Yes, he had a very stacked roster. But he also had some games where he had a very depleted roster, and he still got some results during those games. So, and they won the Shield. You know, they finished top of the league. Again, you could say, yes, he had a stacked roster, but he did what I think um, Paul Riley, again, and um, Cindy Parlo come before Riley couldn't do, and that was actually really get this team working together, getting all of those egos. I hate to say it, but when you have a team of stars, there are going to be egos involved. So getting them all to work together to accomplish that goal of winning the Shield and getting a home playoff game for Portland in front of that really great crowd that I hope one day can spread to every team in the league, but that's a OP for another time. So kudos to you, Mark Parsons. Well done. I think you were probably were the best choice you know, for the argument to say, but he lost in the semifinal. Voting was done before the semifinal, so that had absolutely no bearing on whether or not he should have won. So that's that. Uh, we have Defender of the Year. For the first time in league history, it did not go to Becky Sauer run. Uh, went to Lauren Barnes in Seattle Rain. Um, yeah, if it were last season, 
I probably would totally 100% agree with this one. I think she had a much better year last year. I thought she started off a bit rough this year. Didn't really play up to the same level that she had in 2015. You know, maybe, maybe it should have gone to somebody like Aaron Golan. I still can't believe Casey Short wasn't one of the finalists, but... Yeah, that's uh, nothing we fans can do about that. We don't decide who gets onto the short list. Um, so, you know, I thought maybe it should have gone to Aaron Gilland or maybe even Emily Menges. Again, I think Emily Menges was the one I voted for. So, you know, I mean, again, it is what it is. Um, she, she had a good season. It wasn't as great as it was in 2015, but it was still pretty good. So, you know, don't have too many arguments against her. But, yeah, like like I said, it is what it is. So, congrats, Lauren. Um, goalkeeper of the year. Uh, finalists were Ashlyn Harris from Orlando, Alyssa Nair from Chicago, and last year's winner, Michelle Betos from Portland. Uh, the award went to Ashlyn Harris. Kind of a head scratcher. Not that Ashlyn Harris was bad per se, but I think if you look at um, overall performance, yes, Orlando didn't have the greatest of back lines at times, especially towards the end. But I think, I think overall, Alyssa Nair did have a better season. And not totally 100% sold on Betos. I still think she probably won last year because of that goal. So, yeah, this one is, I, I don't agree with it. I'm just, I'm, I, my opinion, I'm not sold on Ashlyn Harris as being this tremendous goalkeeper. She's good. She has a lot of talent, but I think sometimes she makes these saves that are they look more flashy than they should and i think part of that is because she is caught out of position and has to be a bit more acrobatic to make the save that another keeper would probably make easier and not look as flashy so you know i'm not hating on ashlyn harris i think she's talented I think she could probably start for any national team, any of the national team in the world, except maybe one or two. Um, just not my cup of tea, not my cup of tea. What I would want for my club or country, but it's just I, she's good, just not not for me. So, just my opinion. Don't play me. Don't send me hate mail or anything like that. So, just my opinion. So, yeah, let's move on. Uh, final award, individual. One-person award. We had the most valuable player. Uh, finalists were Tobin Heath and Allie Long, both from Portland. Uh, Kristen Press from Chicago. Clea Ojai from Houston. And Lynn Williams from Western New York. Um, ended up going to Lynn Williams. What do I think about that one? Um, yeah, if Tobin Heath had ended up winning this award, uh, I would not have complained. Because, yes, she missed a few games for the Olympics, but when she was there, she still played for pretty well. At times, I think she actually carried Portland in some of, their, some of the performances where they weren't that impressive, so... And and she set the league assist record, so you know if if the voters had decided that Tobin Heath instead of Lynn Williams would be a more suitable choice, I don't think too many people would have complained about that. Maybe one or two upset Flash fans that were upset not to see would have been upset not to see Lynn Williams win, but yeah, I think either one would have been a, a deserving winner. Uh, Allie Long. That one I just don't get because I I watched I watched every game of the season except for one game I had to miss and I tried to rewatch it and it just 
it was kind of a boring game. So halfway through, I was like, I can't watch anymore. But um, I've seen every Portland game. I just, it was just before the Olympics. She didn't really do much of anything. She's just kind of there, basically taking up oxygen on the field. And yes, she did start scoring after the Olympics, but at least one of those was offside. In that last game against Sky Blue, she was a, a yard or two offside. So, and a couple other ones where it kind of just fell to her, and then she just tapped, happened to be there and tapped it in. So, yeah, she did start scoring, but other than that, she didn't really do a whole lot. I didn't cer certainly didn't see anything in her play that was um, MVP worthy. You know, when when I did notice her, she wasn't bad, but it wasn't something that stepped up that stepped out to me to say, "Oh, she's so great. She deserves to be the MVP." Whatever. Um, Kristen Press maybe a little bit more of an argument for her than Long. Um, yeah, a little bit to the test. I, I, a little bit to testament of how kind of down some of the overall performances was were was because I can speak. Um, I think maybe that spot could have been taken by somebody like Nadim, who did score a lot of goals for Portland. I I believe she was the leading scorer, so that one was a little bit of a. I guess, but not very, not too convincing. Um, and as for Ojai, uh, I, it, it, I think she was probably, besides maybe Long, I think she was the least deserving of the five because she had a fantastic second half of the season. Absolutely killed it. Was by far the best player in the second half of the season. But you can't award a seasonal award for somebody who does nothing for half a season. I mean, what did she do before she scored her first goal? Nothing, except maybe get off get called offside a few dozen times. It's just a really poor half of the season, not taking anything away from what she did in the second half of the season. But it's you got to show up for an entire season maybe have one or two games where you're not at your best, but it I, I think it would have been bad if she had won based on half of the season. Again, a great look a, a fantastic half of the season, but it was still only half a season and I don't think that makes up enough for her at best lackluster showing in the first half of the season. So glad she didn't win, but well done for her for pushing uh, Lynn Williams for the Golden Boot until the last week of the season. So good job, Clea, and good job on getting a co-op, which we'll get to later. Um, as far as Lynn Williams, you know, uh, maybe a little bit of complaints that that all four seasons the Golden Boot winner has also won the Most Valuable Player Award. And I can kind of see those arguments. It's like, why don't we just combine the two since they're going to go to the same person every year? Which is which is a valid argument. I mean, I mean, I can see I can see where they're coming from. They do have a separate award for top goal scorer, and like I said, you know, if they'd given it to Tobin Heath, I think a lot of people would have accepted that. Um, but she, but leaving that aside, she did have a great season. She's, again, led the league in scoring. Uh, did chip in five assists, so it wasn't just scoring. She was also setting up others. Um, she did, if if you watch her play, she does stuff off the ball. That's It's not just standing near the 18 and waiting for balls to come in. She does do a lot of work to set others up, as well as uh, actually scoring. So I think it's a little short-sighted to, to say that all she does is score goals when she does do a lot more for the Flash. So, and that's pretty much all I got for that. Um, 
And we have the, uh, just announced today, the best 11 and the second best 11. Uh, best 11 was Ashlyn Harris as goalkeeper. Uh, defenders Lauren Barnes, Aaron Gilland, Emily Mangez, Becky Sauerbrunn. Midfielders Tobin Heath, Ali Long. And forwards Jess McDonald, Kalia Ojai, Kristen Press, and Lynn Williams. Not too many surprises there. Um, second 11, uh, goalkeeper Lesnar, defenders Julie Johnson, Nally Prevere, Christy Rampone, Casey Short. Midfielders Daniel Calaprico, Vanessa DiBernardo, Jess Fishlock, Kim Little. And forwards Crystal Dunn and Shea Groom. Don't have a tremendous amount of complaints for this, uh, for these best in second 11. Um, I thought maybe I would have switched uh, either Danielle Colaprico or Vanessa Di Bernardo in place of Allie Long. Again, don't think Allie Long had that good of a season to be in the best 11, but what do I know? I'm just one person. Um, the other ones, um, Crystal Dunn, yeah, she played really well, but I probably would have maybe put in Nadia Nadim in place of her. Don't know if Crystal Dunn got it because she's more known among the more casual fans than Nadia Nadim. Or if the players maybe thought she was more deserving. I don't know. But in my personal opinion, I probably would have left Crystal Dunn out and gone with uh, Nadia Nadim. Um, the other one... A little bit controversial. Not quite sure I would have had just Fishlock in either best 11 or second 11. Again, not that she was terrible, but I thought there were so many games. I think maybe she rushed back from her injury, and there were some games where she just did not look like herself. She didn't look like the player that had done so well for Seattle the last three seasons. I probably would have taken her out and put in Kristen Edmonds instead. I think Edmonds was far and away the Pride's best player this season. Scored a lot of goals, had some really good balls up to others for goals. Um, I think it's a shame that she kind of got overlooked. So not too many other complaints um is for anybody wondering why ashlyn harris was put in as the best 11 goalkeeper uh don't know if it's the same this year as previous years but in previous years the winner of the goalkeeper of the year was automatically put in as the goalkeeper for the best 11 because in past leagues there were player there were times where a keeper would win keeper of the year but not be picked into the uh, best 11 or second best 11 for, for uh, that season. So I think doing that as a way to, for the league to say, oh, we have our goalkeeper, our goalkeeper of the year into our best 11. There's not going to be any, any fidging on that. So yeah, bit controversial, but, and it's their rules, and I don't make them. So, so those were the uh, end of season awards. Uh, let us know what you think about them. Uh, drop us a line at Twitter at was so off the post, and tell us who you would have picked for your uh, award winner. So that's that. Um, turning now to the latest roster. Let me see if I can bring it up here real quick. Uh, yes, yes, yesterday, besides the MVP of the league being announced, uh, it was also revealed to the public. Players knew, well, players do know well in advance of these uh, public releases if they're going to be on a particular roster or not. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so, in this latest roster, we have 24 players. We have 11 players who have never been, yeah, is it one, two, three? Yeah, we have 11 players that have yet to be capped for the national team. 
although some of them have been called into camps in the past, they never uh, got to see any playing time. So that's probably the least experienced roster we've had in, I don't know, maybe 10 years. It's definitely been a while since we've seen a roster this low on overall experience. We have some experienced players, but a lot of players who haven't haven't even hit 50 caps le- yet, much less even have one. So, so for this upcoming roster, we have at the goalkeeper, Jane Campbell from Stanford. Ashlyn Harris from the Prime, Listen Air from the Red Stars. At Defender, we have Abby Dahl Kemper from the Flash, Erin Gilland, also from the Red Stars, Merritt Mathias from the Rain, Kelly O'Hara, Sky Blue, Becky Sauerbrunn from Kansas City, Casey Short from Red Stars, Emily Sonnet from Portland. In the midfield, we have Morgan Bryan from Houston. Daniel Colaprico from the Red Stars. Tobin Heath and Lindsey Horan, both from the Thorns. Carly Lloyd from Houston. Ali Long from the Thorns. Sam Mewis from The Flash. And Andy Sullivan from Stanford. And at forward, we have Crystal Dunn from The Spirit. Shea Groom from Kansas City. Bit of a surprise, we have Ashley Hatch from Brigham Young University, BYU for short. <coughs> uh, Cleo High from The Dash, Kristen Press from the Red Stars, and the recently named MVP, Lynn Williams from Western New York. Um, quick thoughts on this roster. We are finally getting some a lot of young, fresh talent in, and I love it. <clears throat> this is something that I think a lot of fans have been wanting to see for so long. To see brand new players being brought in, players that have generally done well at the end in the NWL at the college level, and are being not so much rewarded, but I think brought up to the next level by Jill Ellis to see what they can do. Uh, Compared to some, compared to players who are established internationally. So that part is great. You may notice that there are a few names that are missing. We'll get to that in just a second. Um, again, I, I do like a lot of these players. Kind of scratching my head a little bit on Mara Mathias because she's listed as a defender. And when she played as a defender for Seattle, I was not impressed. Didn't think she was particularly adept at defending. Didn't think she had. Don't think she has the speed to really match up with some of the better forwards on the international scene. Forwards that are not only technical but are really fast. Uh, Switzerland does have a couple of those. I don't know. Uh, the Switzerland roster hasn't been revealed yet, so I don't know who all they're bringing, but. If they bring some of the names that I'm expecting, it could be quite a challenge for her. Um, I think some people are confused as to why Ashley Hatch was chosen. Um, I, my, I, myself, I was a little baffled, but I did some checking on that, and she's actually the leading goal scorer in the nation at the time of the public release of the roster. So. I think Jill might have seen that and said, maybe I ought to check on her and see what she can do. Maybe it's not just a college thing. Maybe she can do it uh, against the best in the world. So that one's an interesting one. Um, so, yeah, I, I really like a lot of these players, these new faces that have been brought in. A couple of them make me nervous, but... We'll see how they do internationally if they get into a game. So, um, based, it, she's called in 24, but only 18 are going to dress for every game. And while we definitely will see some new faces, it could go anywhere from a couple of players to every new player getting at least some time on. I don't know. It'll be interesting to watch. I'm 
really looking forward to these games. So that's just a general quick breakdown of the roster. Now for the controversy. There has been a serious outcry from a lot of fans online about certain players being left off the roster. Despite Jill Ellis stating up front and in that email that was leaked out to the public, she told the players that there might be cap camps where they are not getting called into so she can bring in other players and see what some other players can do. Um, it, the, the obvious big, big name being meant being, uh, um, omitted from this roster is Alex Morgan. I don't think Alex Morgan's spot is in danger at all at this time. She is, you know, whether or not you agree with it, she is the base of U.S. soccer. She is the biggest reason why there are so many young kids that go to these games. She is a massive draw. And besides that, throwing all that aside, even if she wasn't a massive draw, she is a very damn good soccer player. She is fantastic. She scored a lot of clutch goals, both for, well, not not so much for club this year, but she is, I believe, tied for the leading goal scorer internationally this year with Carly Lloyd. So she's given, Ellis has given Alex Morgan a bit of a break, letting her rest, letting her recover from the long grind of the season and uh, and the Olympics and all that. Don't freak out. She's not going anywhere. She's safe for now. That could change in the future. But for now, I would not be the least bit surprised if there were... Uh, there's rumors of some friendlies next week. Ne next week. Next month. Nothing's been said on that yet, so we'll see. She, she'll. I, I would bet money if I were a betting person that she would be called back into those friendlies. So everybody needs to calm down. Everybody needs to relax. Alex Morgan is not being cut just because she's not on this particular roster. So take a breath. Um, some other notable names being left out. I mean, we all know the story about Hope Solo. She's suspended. They, Jill Ellis can't call her in even if she wanted to. And she just had surgery. So even if Ellis wanted to call her in and she wasn't suspended, it's she wouldn't have been able to. She It would just, yeah. I, I, right now, I think we'll probably have maybe, unfortunately, seen the last of Hope Solo in the U.S., uh, playing for the U.S. I don't know if that'll change. I don't know what you know, the plans are. I just think right now with the focus towards going to, to a more younger roster, we probably have seen the last. But that could change next year. Who knows? We'll stay tuned. Um, other names uh, got from the... Yeah. In the midfield, we got Megan Rapino being left off. And from the defense, we have Julie Johnson, Megan Klingenberg, and Allie Krieger. I know a lot of fans are upset that Allie Krieger was left off. I know fans are upset that Julie Johnson was left off. Some, maybe not as many, that Megan Klingenberg was left off. And Megan Rapino is a divisive figure, so it's more down the line for that one. So. Yeah, my thoughts on that. Um, uh, this could potentially be the beginning of the end of Allie Krieger's tenure on the national team. I mean, I certainly don't don't hope that's the case. I like Allie Krieger. I think she has a lot to offer this team. She's experienced. She's a very reliable defender. Very rarely do you see a mistake from Allie Krieger. So. You know, she may not be exactly what Jill Ellis wants, but 
I think she does still have a role to play, even if it's not a starting role. I think she could still add a lot to this team. So I really hope this is not the end of Valley Krieger. Um, Julie Johnston has not been at the same level this season, this season, this year, as she was last year. Uh, I've heard mention from uh, the Chicago coach, Rory Dames, that maybe she's nursing a bit of an injury, and this is probably just to give her a rest. I don't think she's going anywhere in, at, at, in the near future. She's still young, still has a couple of things she might need to work on. Um, in order to be, you know, a true, really complete center back like we see from a Becky Sauerbrunn, who was just, even though she didn't get off to the greatest start this year, is still probably the best, one of the best, if not the best center backs in the world. So don't think Julie Johnson is going anywhere. Megan Klingenberg, I know Ellis loves her. I know Kling is exactly what Ellis wants to see in an outside back. But uh, in my personal opinion, I'm hoping this mean, start, means the start at the end for Megan Klingenberg because I don't know if it's she's believing her own hype in the World Cup. I don't know if she's just having a poor season. But she has been, at best, mediocre. At worst, she's killing this team. It's just, it's just painful to see her continue to push up and push up and push up and keep getting burned because she doesn't have the speed to uh, get back in a hurry when she's so far up the field. I mean, you watch the semifinal when uh, she did that throw in that Sam Mewis uh, picked off the play that led to Lynn Williams second goal and Megan Klingenberg was uh, trying her best, but the fact that she couldn't, keep pace with a with a, a player like Sam Mewis who is not slow but she's not super fast and she was dribbling with the ball and the fact that Megan Klingenberg could not keep up with her is not a good sign she's slow she cannot get back in in, in time to cut off these counter attacks when she keeps pushing so far over there's there's no balance with Kling. it's basically get forward all the time. Who cares if I can't get back because someone's going to be covering my mistakes. And that just is not going to, that I just, I don't like it. I hope she's gets phased on a win. I hope one of these new players, Casey short, looking at you, please, please, please blow Jill Ellis's blow Jill Ellis's mind. And Take that spot away from Kling because unless Kling steps up her game, I don't want her near the national team. I think she's killing it. So maybe this will be a shot to get her act together and figure things out, but we'll see. I mean, you know, Jill does love Kling, so we'll see what happens with that. Uh, as far as Rapino leaving off, um, yeah, I think we all know the stuff with Kling. I'm not going to rehash it. You know, whether or not you agree, it is a distraction to the team. And even though there's nothing going on, I think it's a distraction that both the Federation and Jill Ellis don't want. I don't want to have to deal with. I'm not giving my opinion on Megan Rapinoe's protest. It's not my place to do so. Uh, so it's just, I think, I think Rapino has pretty much decided that I'm going to keep doing this. If it means the end of my career, so be it. So well, may, maybe something will change with that. I don't know. And I'm not here to pass judgment on what she's doing. I'm not here to say, oh, she's wrong for doing that or, oh, she's right for doing that. Again, not my place to do so because, you know, I'm just one person. And while I have an opinion, I'm, yeah, I'm not touching that one. And if anybody asks, you'll also say, well, she's recovering from 
still trying to get back to full fitness. We thought it would be best to give her the time to get back into full speed. So we decided to leave her off and we, we may call her into the next one. So I don't know if anyone's going to ask for that because of U.S. soccer's history of not, of not allowing questions like that to be asked, but that's topic for another day. So again, I just want to say it just because a player you like was not on this particular roster it does not mean that they are off the team for good. It just means that Ellis is trying out some new things and doesn't want to bring in 30 or 40 players to a, a camp for two games. So relax, breathe, and think positive. Because, I mean, I honestly, I can point to two or three players that probably won't be on this next roster. I mean, who knows? Next time we could see Carly Lloyd not getting called up. She's mentioned that she's getting married in November, and with two rumored friendlies in November, I wouldn't be surprised not to see her on this roster. I wouldn't be surprised if Jill Ellis says, thanks, Tobin, but we're going to give you a break for this. You can go along. We're going to give you a break for this one. We're going to see what this player does. Uh, Kristen, you've been playing a long season. You know, we're going to bring bring in Alex to work with this group of players and see how she does with them. Doesn't mean they're off the team. You know, Carly Lloyd's the captain. I She might miss a camp or two, but I think her spot is safe for now. If she falls off, Jill Ellis will probably bench her. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens. I think... Next, next call of camp after this is going to be fairly interesting to see if any new faces can get called in. Um, one last quick point about the roster. Some people have questioned why was, why was uh, Gene Campbell brought in instead of um, one of the NWSL goalkeepers? Why don't we have more players from the NWSL called in? Uh, fairly simple explanation. If you read some of the uh, legal documents that have been released because of the two lawsuits, uh, you'll see in the uh, in the CBA agreement and stuff that it has been pointed out that um, that Jill Ellis can only call in at one time eight players who are non-contracted and. NWSL players that don't have a contract count towards that limit. College players do not because they are not eligible to be contracted. They're basically free. All they get, all they can accept is a per diem. They can't get paid because that would, they would have to forfeit their collegiate college eligibility. So if you're, if you're wondering why that's it, there were already eight NWSL players called in and that's the maximum that uh, Jill Ellis can call in in any one camp. So, I mean, it wasn't a snub against them. She just could only pick eight, and those were the eight she picked. Whether or not you agree with all of those eight, again, it is what it is. So maybe next camp we'll see one of the NWSL keepers get called in. Who knows? So just wanted to point that out. Um I think that's it for me. I know this was kind of long, but I had a lot of points that I wanted to get to. Um, sorry we didn't get a show out to you this week. It's been a really crazy week for all of us. Um, couldn't quite get our schedule synced. So we are hoping next week to do to have a uh, show covering all of the playoffs with the semifinals and the final. So, and we will let you know uh, when that is going to be. Stay tuned to our Twitter feed at Wasso Off the Post. And that's pretty much it for me. Until next time, this has been your friendly rant queen. Sign